guys, in today's, in this video, I'm gonna discuss with you naman the conceptual framework. So, if you haven't watched my Start Smart video, um, I suggest that you watch it first before this video. This is the third installment to that. Okay, the very first video is the Start Smart, how to start your research the smart way. So, I discussed there um, how to conceptualize, how to think of a topic. And then, I also discussed there the variables and then choosing your parameters. So, for those of you who have consulted your research topic with me, I would always ask you, okay, give me your variables. This is your topic, what will be your variables? Remember, if you have consulted with me, I would always ask you, what will be your variables? And then, afterwards, I would ask you your parameters. How are you going to measure your variables? What will be the parameters or the description of your variables? Because we wanted to make it specific, measurable, attainable, right? So that is um, that is how we start a research. Now, if you're wondering, there is no parameters or mentioned of parameters in your modules 1 to 8. So that is the reason why I created this video so that you will know um, saan na din siya gagamitin. Okay? Ano ba yun? Dinagdag lang ba siya ni ma'am? Not, not, not really. In my years of teaching research, I've come up with ways on how to make research easier for you. Especially that you are, you know, this is your very first research paper because you are formal research paper rather because you are senior high school and when you go to college you will encounter more of this but for now i'm gonna teach you the quick and easy way on how to do your research paper so now that you have your parameter and your variables i'm gonna teach you how to make your conceptual framework using your par parameters and your variables so i'm gonna show you this tutorial okay i'm using okay i'm just drawing it para mas madali nyo siya ma-figure out okay so watch this video a very very short clip on how you are going to write or draw your conceptual framework using a research paradigm okay so watch this video first and then i'm gonna explain it later on Okay, so let's start by drawing your independent variable. So write down there your independent variable. That's your first box. Second box is your dependent variable. And then underneath each variable is your parameters. So that's it. That's your independent variables. Parameters 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Do the same thing with your dependent variable. So parameter 1, parameter 2, parameter 3 of the dependent variables. Now, since we are looking into their relationship or their effect, just draw an arrow. What I showed you in that um, tutorial video, which, you know, don't mind my handwriting, I'm using an iPad to draw it. So, in that video, You've seen that the parameters are listed under the variables and then um, you would see the connection using the arrows. So, for example, the variable 1, it has parameters 1, 2, and 3 below it. And then the arrow is pointing to the dependent variable. So, it means that this independent variable is affecting or has a relationship with the dependent variable. When a reader would look into your paper, they would easily see na, ah, okay, ito pala yung flow ng study nila. Ito pala yung pag-aaralan nila. Ito pala ang definition nila no variable nila. So, hindi siya vague and it's easier for you to know na ito lang yung direction ng paper namin. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? And then, also, Going from, from that conceptual framework, we will be able to determine your statement of the problem and your definition of terms. So, yung dinrowing natin kanina, that is just the research paradigm. Anong mangyayari? Ano yung conceptual framework? The conceptual framework will be the description of your paradigm. So, let's say that um, in this study, we were going to look into the effect of physical fitness to to the academic performance of students, okay, of senior high school students. So, um, we will measure 
Okay? Doon ay papasok si parameter, the physical fitness according to these parameters. And then, we will measure academic performance according to these parameters. And then, we will also look into the level of effect. So, dinidefine mo lang yung arrow. Dinidiscuss mo bale yung mga boxes. And dinidiscuss mo din kung ano yung significance ng arrow. Okay? So, basically, the conceptual framework is it's composed of the research paradigm and your description of that research paradigm. Yung drawing nyo at yung description nung dinrawin nyo. Nakakaintindihan? Okay, so let's proceed to your statement of the problem. This is very easy. Balikan natin ngayon yung drawing ko. Okay, so watch this video again. Okay, so number one is your independent variable. 1.1 is your parameter, 1.2 is parameter 2, and then 1.3. And then do the same thing with your dependent variable, so it's number 2. And then the parameters are 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3. Now, for question number 3 will be your arrow or the level of effect or relationship. Okay, so your statement of the problem will just basically reflect your conceptual framework. So, when you say statement of the problem, ito yung aarali namin. Ito yung mga questions namin for inquiry or investigation in this paper. So, diba dun sa research paradigm, nakita nyo, nandin nagayang ko ng numbers, yung mga boxes. So, so, yung independent variable, that is question number one. And then, Yung dependent variable, ginawa kong question number 2. And then, yung arrow, that is your SOP number 3. So, how do you write that? So, for example, um, what is the fitness level of the students in terms of blank, blank, and blank? That is your parameters. And then, question number 2, or your SOP number 2, what is the academic performance of the students in terms of Blank, blank, and blank. Your parameters. Question number three, that is the arrow, if you've, as you've seen in my tutorial. That The question will be, is there a significant effect between the level of um, fitness of the students to their academic, to the level of academic performance? In short, you are checking if there is a relationship between the two. Ma'am, what about descriptive? I don't want to compare. I don't want to see the relationship. Then just do it. The framework will just be questions 1 and 2. No arrow in the middle. So that's it for statement of the problem. I hope you were able to see how easy it is to do it now that you have your concept because you've started with a strong view of your parameters and your variables. Okay? So, now let's proceed to the definition of terms. Ma'am, ano ang i-define namin? That is the common question eh. Siyempre, ang i-define nyo lang, yung aarali nyo. Ano ba yung aarali nyo? E di yung dalawang variables, define your variables and the parameters. In short, you will have kung tatlong parameters per variable. Ilan lahat yung definitions nyo? Walo. Walo lang. As in, eight. Okay? Eight terms lang. So, meron tayong tinatawag ngayon na conceptual definition and operational definition. So, yung conceptual definition, yan yung nababasa nyo sa dictionary. Okay? Yan yung pwede nyo mabasa sa, um, sa Google. Okay? Okay? Yung mga research nyo or sa mga scholarly articles. That is the conceptual definition. So, ano ang definition ni so, physical fitness. So, ano yung definition niya kay dictionary? So, that is the conceptual definition. Ano naman ngayon yung operational definition? Yung operational definition, yan yung definition nyo mismo. Okay? That is how you define that term in your research paper. Kung paano namin gagawin yun? Siyempre, kung paano nyo gagamitin yung word sa paper nyo. For example, Academic performance. Anong definition niya? Kukunin niyo yun kay Google. That is the conceptual definition. Now, ang operational definition, ganito yan. In this study, academic performance relates to, or in this study, academic performance means, okay, dun yun nilalagay yung inyong parameter. In this study, academic performance will only mean 
the grades of the students, the attendance of the students, the class participation of the students. So, yung parameters nyo, yun yung operational definition niya. Nagigets nyo? Okay. Ma'am, ano naman ngayon yung parameters? Paano naman yun? Paano naman ang conceptual and operational definition niya? Of course, same lang sa conceptual. At sa conceptual, kukunin nyo pa rin siya sa um, Google or sa dictionary. But for the operational, dyan nyo na ipapasok yung measurement. So, for example, in this study, attendance refers to the number of times the students attend online classes per week, number of students, number of times the student is late in his or her um, online classes, the number of times the student submits his or her um, tasks late. You measurement and that will be your definition for your parameters operationally. recap, I was able to discuss already the theoretical framework, the conceptual framework, the statement of the problem, and the definition of terms. Okay, so the submission of your papers, the drafts only, will be next week, hopefully next week before Christmas. So next week, uh, we won't be able to meet you because we have our in-service training, but you can still catch up with your works. Okay, so... That's it for today's video. Bye!